When it comes to powered paragliding events in the U.S., Beach Blast has been one of the best. Located on the shores of Panama City, Florida's Edgewater Beach Resort, attendees have comfortable amenities, opportunities to check out the latest gear, great scenery, and of course, magical beach flying conditions. This year I hung out in the LZ and caught some of the action. Launching is one of the most challenging aspects of learning powered paragliding, but these guys make it look easy. In recent years, the level of pilot skill at events and in the sport in general has increased dramatically. Here's what it looked like 10 years earlier. Improvements in training and equipment have significantly increased the success rate for new pilots getting into the sport. But there's another reason these pilots look like they know what they're doing. Beach Blast is one of several events now requiring a flight rating. Alex Donaghy, assistant director of Beach Blast, believes that requiring ratings has considerably improved safety and also compliance with the rules at the event. To get a rating, you not only have to meet the minimum skill and knowledge requirements, you must schedule a session with an instructor and go through an evaluation process. Alex feels that pilots willing to go through a rating process are in general more compliant. And at Beach Blast, following the rules is crucial to becoming a welcome event in Panama City. No one understands that better than Beach Blast director John Black. Here's London Ivy. Shortly after this launch, London became the first of several pilots to wind up in the water during the event. None of the pilots were hurt, primarily because they had flotation devices. The number one cause of death in powered paragliding is drowning. Approximately one in 20 pilots who land in the water without flotation have drowned. Flotation dramatically improves your chances for survival, but flotation is not a guarantee. At best, a water landing is a complex rescue and equipment salvage. At worst, you're dead. The major manufacturers were here. Parajet came all the way from the UK. Many pilots took advantage of the opportunity to test the latest gear. That's why some launches were a bit shaky. They're trying something new. Another benefit of the rating system Vendors here confidently loaned out equipment because they knew the pilots at Beach Blast were rated. Here's Chris Montes trying out a wing. Chris is one of the few pilots under six foot that can launch one of these low riders in the sand. The key is to take really short steps. Nice work, Chris. Speaking of launch style, everyone has their own unique look. This is the sneak in a foot drag look. Here's the victory foot drag with a toe point, and this is the I knew I should have done a forward look. Here's the I know I'm leaning forward but at least my shoes match my paramotor look. This is the my legs aren't long enough but I can paddle with my arms look. Powered paragliding events are often staged in remote areas. Although these locations are great for flying and hanging out, there's an important opportunity missed. Beach Blast offers the public a very close-up look at powered paragliding. This is good for the sport because it raises awareness, interest, and hopefully tolerance. One way for the public to learn about powered paragliding is to try it. Paul Zarnecki makes tandems look fun and easy, but foot launching with a zero-time co-pilot in front of you requires skill. Though many newcomers to the sport aspire to take up the wife and kids, and the dog and the hamster, few will ever take on the challenge or appreciate the responsibility of flying tandem. Here's Ryan Shaw. 
little encouragement to get into the seat here. You can see Ryan is protecting her ankles. No extra charge. The landing zone at Beach Blast is tight, so accurate landing skills are a necessity for pilot and spectator safety. Demonstrating landing accuracy, for example, landing within a given distance from a target, is a requirement for flight ratings. Another reason why rating standards enable an event like Beach Blast to host a more public event. In light winds, getting into a small LZ can be challenging. This pilot sets up for a landing, but realizes he's too high and decides to go around. This pilot overshoots the LZ and lands in the takeoff zone, which delays the pilots that are ready for launch. This pair mode is getting heavy. Another pilot lands in the launch zone, and you start to see how landing accuracy here is important. I'm gonna run out of gas. Now the pilot that made the go-around lands in the takeoff area. Seriously? Okay, now's my chance. I'm going. I don't care what the flight director says. I'm going, I'm going. Here I go, I'm going. Finally, I get to go. For me, the best part of a flying event is getting together with friends. It was 10 years ago that Jeff Goyne, Jeff Hammond, Michael O'Daniel, and I set out on an adventure that would eventually become the Why We Fly documentary. Why do we fly? <laughs> I'm still asking. Why? <laughs> because there's air there. Why not? <laughs> The next morning, high winds shut down the LZ for a while, and some pilots were getting desperate. Don't do it. Don't do it. And here we are. We're up high, and we're flying. This is cool. You know, since we're not up there, or at least we're up here. Fine. So, here we get to the moment. High winds kept most pilots from pulling out full-sized wings, but several did. Kiting is the best way to improve ground handling to the point where you will eventually be able to fly in windy conditions. Here's me and some others playing around with smaller wings. Small wings make flying in high winds possible. However, small wings can be very responsive and require a light touch, no pun intended, to fly them safely. There goes Chris Montez. See the small steps? Here's Bobby Ben enjoying the high winds. Here's Noah Shapiro. His engine quit, so his friends hung on to him and got it started again so he wouldn't have to put his wing down. For windy tandems, a good ground crew is essential. Paul handles the high winds masterfully. Joshua Gant plays drop the cone on the barrel. Joshua actually got the cone to stay on the barrel, but I unfortunately missed that shot. I didn't miss the shot of his landing. It just goes to show that even the very best pilots can have a mishap. Excellent job of not damaging the prop. The first time you see Eduardo Raposo fly, it doesn't take long to realize he's one of those rare pilots that really has the gift. Eduardo has a rare flavor of smoothness that combines control and confidence.
It's hard to have a camera and high winds without Jeff Goyne getting into the act. I tossed him a cone and, of course, Kester Haynes from Parajet had his own style of enjoying the high winds. Low hovering wasn't really his thing. Kester was all about getting into the swing of it. That evening, I went up with Ryan Shaw to capture some acro from the air. Here's Ryan in a sat. Caster Haynes was a bit further away, but I managed to get a good shot of him as well. <laughs> 